Hello, everybody. Let me know if you guys can hear me. Hello, Rick. Hello, Val's uh, Black Cat's Rule. Hello, Cynthia, Chris McGee. Good to see you guys. Let me know if you guys can hear me before we get going. Hello, Rick. Once again, Val's Black Cat's Rules. Let's see, who else do we have in the chat? Chris McGee, Cynthia Wesley. Thank you guys for joining us. Can everybody hear me? All right, guys, so we're out here in the, uh, I guess you could say a little studio that I have. And uh, we're gonna be using a portable stove and we're gonna be using Lodge today. Rick says, yes, we can hear you. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Vals, for uh, letting me know. Jackie Mills, hello once again. Thank you guys for joining. All righty, guys. So I, I had everything set right now, and uh, I was uh, setting my camera on the, uh, on the uh, tripod here, and sure enough, it fell, and it broke. So I was very upset. And uh, after that, I just decided to hop onto my phone. So we're streaming from the phone once again. Um, like I mentioned, I can see the chat, which is actually pretty cool. So I can see you guys and I can, uh, you know, or, you know, read the messages and I can cook all at the same time. So anyway, hopefully everybody's having a lovely week uh, or a lovely week. I was going to say weekend, but we're not there yet. Almost there. So. Hopefully everybody's having a good time. Um, once again, thank you for joining us. So tonight we're gonna do a little bit of everything. To be honest, we're gonna talk about. Um, I had a, I had somebody comment uh, on one of my videos when I made scrambled eggs, and they were asking, you know, uh, if I had any tips for um, uh, over easy or over hard. Uh, you know, like uh, instead of a scramble, and uh, they were saying that they usually have a hard time uh getting them to not stick so usually they're having a hard time and to be honest it, it is pretty tricky you have to have a really well seasoned pan or uh, at the same time you also have to have great heat control so it has to it has to be both you can't just uh, you know have uh, a really well seasoned pan and not know uh heating so if you're gonna if you're gonna heat up your pan super hot it's not gonna work it's just gonna it might get stuck. It might just glue to the surface. It can happen. That has happened to me. Uh, and if you have it too cold, it will definitely stick to the pan as well. So uh, as I mentioned, we're going to do a little bit of that. But first, I'm actually going to cook uh, some chicken breast for my wife. And we're going to use today the uh, the lodge here that we have. My wife wants... Um, she has everything ready. She uh, prepped herself the... Uh, uh, she loves salads right now, so um, she prepped herself a spring salad with a cucumber, feta, and um, uh, I think it's dried cranberries, a lot of good stuff. And uh, she asked me for protein, which she wanted some chicken, so we're going to do that. But as you can see, we're going to use the Supreme Skillet, uh, just because I haven't used this one in a while, but pretty awesome skillet made from Lodge. Uh, pretty cool stuff there, so... Anyway, let's just get started. Let's get cooking. I'm sure my wife is ready to eat. So with that, let's turn this thing on. Oh, whoops. I don't even have it connected. There we go. All righty. There we go. We don't want too much of a high heat, something low. But uh, as I mentioned, we have some chicken here. And uh, we got blackened, uh, the blackened um, seasoning. This is what I like using, guys. The blackened with cayenne and lemon uh, from Kinder's. This stuff is great. I love it. So if you guys haven't given it a, a try, I do recommend it. Not that Kinder's sponsors me or anything like that, but Kinder's has really good seasonings. Um, so um, as I mentioned, we're going to be using this for the uh, protein for my wife's salad. But anyway... Let's get that going. We're gonna, as I mentioned, preheat this pan. Getting pretty warm pretty quickly. And uh, we're gonna add a bit of uh, oil here in a minute. 
Let me uh, read the chat, see what you guys are talking about. If you guys have any questions, let me know. If you guys are new to cast iron cookware, if you guys want to have a couple tips here and there, uh, believe me, the chat is more than uh, knowledgeable on these things, but let me know what you guys think. Limps and wimps. A uh, pinch of salt changes the oil, butter, chemistry, and will brown foods better and less sticking. Good to know. I appreciate that. We'll give that a go. I got two eggs out here. We're going we're gonna to use two eggs to... Um, uh, give the example and we'll see how that turns out. So we'll do that after I'm done cooking the uh, chicken for the uh, protein here. Let's see, what else do we have? Uh, I love the cover and steam method if I don't have bacon grease. Yes. Well, I'm actually, what I'm going to do is pan sear the chicken and uh, we're going to use the uh, lid here. I do have a lid, cast iron lid. We're going to use this and actually a quick little tip for you guys. So for these lids, I do recommend that you actually rub them with a bit of oil to prevent um, any of the uh, steam to damage your lid. So just add a tiny bit of oil. That was a lot. You see, we're getting there. So we're going to add, rub it in, rub in that oil. And uh, this is a um, lint free paper towel. It's a Scott's paper towel shop towel and uh, you can use any kind but I like this one because it doesn't leave any lint behind uh, compared to just uh, paper towels so anyway make sure that you rub it in really well every single part of the lid and believe me that will be a lifesaver for your lids uh, it will be less prone to getting um, that steam barrier or that steam this will protect that and there'll be a barrier uh, to prevent that seasoning to get damaged so uh, that's a tip that I picked up from Dutch Oven Cooking. And uh, this is what I do now every single time I use a cast iron lid. So you rub it in as, as almost as if you're going to season this. And uh, there you go. You don't want it to, you know, caked on there just enough. We're going to use that in a minute. That is hot. Okay, we're ready. We're going to add just a tiny splash of oil. We don't want too much. It's already starting to smoke. So I got to... Turn this down. All righty. I don't want to add too much oil. I don't want to have too much splatter either, but as I mentioned, we're just going to pan fry these. So a little different today, as I mentioned, we're outside, we're in the uh, studio, and um, it's really hot. I wish I had my AC, but I I'm enjoying this. I still haven't really set up the uh, studio yet. I still got a lot of stuff hanging around. Move you guys just a bit so you guys can see. Here we are. Uh, I still need to put in lights. For now, I'm using this uh, little lamp up here. This one here, I got a spotlight that's uh, battery powered, which is helping me, but I got to keep moving. So i um, using that for now. But uh, as I mentioned, we still got some work on that studio. Still haven't finished. And honestly, I haven't worked on it very much as I wish I would have. But we're getting there. Sorry, guys, I don't mean to move you around and perhaps make you dizzy. Actually, you're right. Thank you, uh, Rick. I should move those because they might get damaged. All righty. Thank you, Rick, for that tip. I do appreciate it. Yeah, we're, we're working on a little uh, camp stove. So if you guys have never used these, these things are awesome. I love them. They got great heat. And uh, they're good for a 10-inch skillet. Don't go anything bigger. Don't, the 12-inch won't work. Uh, and they work great. But, you know, like I said, they'll work great with a 10-inch 10, 10 and below. As you can tell, nothing is getting stuck. Look at that. That's actually really nice. Good results. But we did get the pan nice and ripping hot. So uh, I'm sure that helped out a lot. Yeah, uh, Rick, thank you. Uh, Rick was uh, saying, got your back, Lewis. Thank you. 
Do appreciate it, guys. Let's see, what else do we have? Nesha's River Catfishing. I really like that little stove, very cool. Yeah, you know, I got it for $19 at Walmart. Um, I went to Lake Almanor in California and uh, I forgot my Coleman. So I have a Coleman stove, camp stove, and I forgot it. So while we were in Susanville uh, in California, we stopped by a, a Walmart there, very small little town. And uh, I picked up this little um, Ozark Trail Walmart brand stove, and it works great. I actually like it. I actually like this better than the Coleman. If you guys have the Coleman version, this one is a bit better. I'll show you guys why later, but we're going to flip these. Yep. And as I mentioned, nothing's getting stuck, guys, which uh, I'm very happy. Nothing's stuck. It's starting to uh, get a good seasoning, or I'm sorry, a good sear. So used to talking about cast iron that I'm just saying seasoning left and right. But anyway, getting a good sear on that chicken. Uh, no brown bits yet, but I'm sure once we are going to... Actually, we're going to cover this pretty soon and let it steam. So uh, actually, I think it should be time for me to do that. Let me see what we're at. Let's see if we can go a bit lower. We can, okay. We're going to go a tiny bit lower and we're going to cover. Guys, let me know when about uh, three minutes have gone by. So let me know three minutes. All right. In the meantime, let's chit chat. Uh, as I mentioned, thank you everybody for joining us tonight. We are we are going to do a little, um, I guess you could say, test uh, a little showcasing of how to do fried egg. Uh, and you know what, eggs and cast iron are pretty synonymous. Uh, Lodge, you know, Lodge itself actually, their logo is an egg. Uh, you know, within their name. So yeah, pretty synonymous. And uh, I feel like if you buy a cast iron piece of cookware, you got to do eggs in it. It's it's almost like the challenge, getting the perfect eggs out of that. So as I mentioned, uh, it's almost synonymous. And we're going to give you guys uh, tips. Now I'm hoping here with the, uh, the little, um, oh, how do you say it? With the little, you know, tutorial that I'm about to do with the uh, fried egg. Hopefully it turns out and uh, you know, I'll do my best to showcase uh, how I do them uh, and how you can try, you know, making them at home. But if you guys have any tips, let me know in the uh, comments in the chat. Let me know if you guys have a certain way that you guys make your eggs, uh, whether they're uh, over hard, sunny side up, uh, whatever method you guys like, let me know. <coughs> Man, that cayenne is spicy. Whew. Making me cough. <coughs> I ain't got a, a hood, hood vent here, so starting to get spicy in here. Sorry about that, guys. One method, though, that I like using um, is the butter method. I like using butter instead of oil. Uh, but we'll try both. I don't know. I'm, I'm not great at using just pure oil. I'm better using uh, butter. And people like using both, which is oil and butter, to prevent the butter from browning. Uh, and I'm talking about making eggs. Um, so let me know what you guys prefer. Is it just butter, ghee, um, oils, uh, lard? What do you guys prefer using for your uh, eggs? Let's see. And I'll, I'll be reading the chat right now. Rick says, I like scrambled with cheese. I also like over easy or fried and slightly steamed. Yeah, steamed is probably one of the best ways to go, especially if you add a tiny bit of water. Man, it's a game changer. Cynthia Wesley says, if you ain't sneezing, then it ain't seasoned. Uh, yeah, true. Very, very true. Oh, man, I should probably check up on it. That is hot. Yeah, we're starting to get some brown bits. Looking pretty good. Let's flip it again and cover. Now 
And one thing that I did forget to uh, put in here was actually, or, or bring out here into the uh, little studio that I have here is um, my uh, little th probe thermometer. So uh, in the near future, this is gonna be more lighting. We're gonna have uh, more things, um, a lot more organized and uh, not have all this clutter here where I feel like it's just cluttered. But first I need to organize the space before I get to uh, organize the countertop. Oh yeah, let me read the comments. I wanna know what you guys like. Jackie Mills says, I use avocado oil and butter at the same time. You add the oil so your butter doesn't burn. Yep, I forget what the name of that method is, but it, there, there is a name for that. Debbie says, uh, Mark, lots of YouTube on how to make ghee. Yeah, ghee is pretty cool. Um, pretty easy to make as well. Am I a pro at it? No, I, I'm, I, go the, I go the lazy route. I just go buy it. Uh, Granny Graham says, uh, bacon grease. She likes using bacon grease. Mark Harris, I prefer using butter. I've uh, just started making homemade butter and I hope to be, or to try making my own ghee one of these days. That sounds uh, pretty challenging and I hope that you have great success with that because uh, it is actually a good amount of work. Uh, I see a lot of uh, social media influencers using, you know, their own butter and, uh, you know, it, it makes me want to, to try and make my own butter, but it's not as easy as it looks, so I know that you're, you know, for you to try that, you must be, you, you must know what you're doing. So, uh, so yeah, let's see, what else do we have? Fried, Granny Graham says, fried with crispy edges. Butter and oil, I use oil. Jeanette says, I, I use oil. Debbie, butter and oil. Eggs cooked in a lot of bacon grease, you can uh, scuttle the grease over the eggs, just done to your liking, yeah. I've done that before when I cook bacon. I just, you know, put the uh, eggs in there after I take out the bacon, and man, those are the best eggs. Alrighty, I think uh, Debbie says I save. <coughs> oh my God, <clears throat> I save my bacon grease for cornbread or beans. Uh, Debbie says, "Oh, Lewis, butter is easy. I've met it many times. I, it, it's, uh, you know, you guys, it looks easy." And I see a lot of social media influencers do it, but I don't know, I get scared. All righty guys, bear with me while I go grab the uh, probe thermometer. Keep an eye on for my food guys, make sure it doesn't burn. Goodness, that is so <laughs> spicy. Oh God, I think I went over, overboard on that cayenne uh, seasoning. Whew, that was a bad idea doing that out here. Anyway, uh, I, think, I think we're pretty much done. So I'm gonna turn this off and uh, let's check. All right, you guys. Come on. Uh, 200 degrees, uh, internal temp. Uh, that seems, I don't know. Did it, does my chicken look burnt, guys? 200 degrees, that sounds insane. But then again, the, uh, the steam, whoa. The steam, I'm sure, helps out a lot. 186 on that one. So these are both done. So that is it. And to be honest, I'm happy. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god, I'm choking over here. <clears throat> No, Jesus. Why do you have to be so spicy? I've, I've actually made this before, but it was never this bad. Alrighty. Meal prep. Done. And there we are, guys. I say the uh, skillet looks pretty great. Nothing crazy. Believe me, that is easy to remove. So, cooking protein on cast iron probably will give you one of the best results always uh, pan fried pan seared chicken a little burnt but then again it is uh blackened seasoning so it kind of looks it has to look blackened so uh, i think it looks great anyway guys that's that we're going to move on now to uh the eggs so uh bear with me while i go and uh, give this to my wife so she can make herself her salad Okay, sorry about that, guys. <coughs> All right, that we're going to move this guy to uh, let it cool. We're going to use another pan, so we're going to get another pan dirty, uh, to showcase the eggs, how to, how to make eggs. This little stove, believe it or not, guys, is powerful. Um, the heat rating, the BTUs on this is actually better than the Coleman version. So if you guys had any questions about this little, you know, this little propane or little butane burner, this thing is awesome. I like it. So, um, yeah, this little stove, if you guys are ever going camping, yeah, buy one of these. Those are awesome. Alright guys, which one should we use? Let's use a chef skillet to make, to make eggs. Alright guys, we're going to be using today a Wagnerware chef skillet. You can see here. Chef skillet 9 inch. This is a unmarked chef skillet from Wagnerware. You can tell by the uh, handle handle design as well. Uh, very nice interior. I like this pan a lot. All right guys, let's give this a go. Now wish me luck here uh, and you know trying to teach folks the way that I make them. So the first one that we're going to try is going to be with uh, butter. So let's give that one a go and uh, let's see how it turns out. So. That is too high. I'm going to go lower. Alrighty guys. I'm going to move you guys in just a bit more and adjust the uh, angle of the camera here. Hopefully you guys can see a tiny bit better right here. So low heat, you don't want anything too crazy. Don't go to the highest setting. Always low and slow when it comes to eggs.
Okay. I brought out a little bit of butter and I also have some oil. But as I mentioned, we're gonna do butter first because well, I've always had really good, um, uh, like a good experience with, um, with butter. So I know some of you prefer using oil and we'll do that method after this one. All right, we're gonna use about yay much. I know it looks like a lot, but believe me, it does help. And I think it gives the uh, egg profile a, a better taste, in my opinion. Now, you can use more, you can use less, all up to you. But I prefer this amount. Maybe this is a, a bit too much, yeah. This is a bit too much. So, you don't want you don't necessarily want this much. You don't want it drowned in the pool of oil or butter. I've heard people in my comments before, uh, when I first started the YouTube guys, there was somebody that would say to me like, well, nothing's going to stick into that pan with that amount of, uh, or with the, that lake of butter. And, um, I, I don't know why it, not that it bothered me, but it, uh, you know, it did somewhat have me think, uh, and it did improve my cooking by helping me, you know, take in that, uh, that critique and uh, challenging myself to use less oil and less butter. All right, guys. Yeah. Usually I don't do this much, guys. This is way much. This little propane stove is offset, so it's going off to the side. I don't like that very much. But we're going to cut the heat there. See, no heat. We're going to cut the heat. Otherwise, the because uh, the residual heat from the pan is going to cook the eggs. Now, at this point, I would recommend like a little cover. Um, I don't necessarily have one, so we're just gonna use the, the one that I used from Lodge. But I think, uh, you know, feeling it there, it doesn't feel like it's uh, stuck. Maybe a tiny tad bit stuck, but not excessive. And as you can see there, nothing necessarily stuck. But yes, this is a lot of butter. So forgive me for that one, guys. We're gonna do a, we're gonna have to do a redo. But what I like doing is covering it and let it steaming or let it steam so that you get a bit more of that cooking. And what you can do is just turn it your stove back on for a, a you know a couple seconds to get some of that heat back. So there you guys go. We got it on low. And we're just gonna use this uh, lid to cook the uh, top of these eggs. Let's see, what are you guys talking about? Hello, Papa Dan. Good to see you. Corey Clark, William Hurt. Who else is here that has uh, just joined us? For those of you that just joined us, we did um, already cook some chicken in a lodge skillet, but that's, all right, we're gonna shut that down. As you can see, we're getting, I would say, pretty decent results. Now, these are way more cooked than I would like them to be on the outsides. They're somewhat burnt. We'll see, we'll, we'll try a flip. Nope. But yeah, you can see they are a bit burnt. Also, that's that browning that you get is from the butter. Uh, we, we're gonna try it. We're, we're gonna clean this out. We're gonna try it with oil this time. Obviously, we're not gonna use that much oil. And, uh, but yeah, you know, I think 
seeing here, I mean, it's, it's crispy, yes. I know a lot of people prefer like soft, uh, like a soft egg white, but uh, it is actually fairly hard. I'll be honest, it is fairly hard to achieve it. So we'll just say that one was the first, uh, you know, uh, I, like I mentioned, not, not the best. I, w I wish I could have better results for you guys, but there you are. And you can see all the brown bits from the uh, butter. Anyway, let's get this guy out and I'll set him on a clean plate because we're going to eat that later. And let's wipe it down. This time around, we're gonna use some oil. Well, might as well season it as well. Stove top in a sense, stove top seasoning. But anyway, here we are, let's, uh, let's go. All right, this time we're gonna use oil. This is a, uh, Olive oil that's refined. So I put frying oil there just so you guys know. We're gonna use yay much. A lot less this time. We don't want too much. We're gonna stay on that low. I wonder what's the lowest that we, we that's probably the better right there. All right, let's crack the egg open. <clears throat> Wish me luck here, guys. I've never had luck with oil and eggs. I can manage with butter, but never oil and eggs. So wish me luck here, guys, because I probably will uh, disappoint you guys. All right, here we go. I'll be honest, it looks like it's probably stuck. Yep. I don't know what it is. I just don't have luck when it comes to oil and um, oil and eggs. Now this is completely stuck. So my preferred method has always been butter. We're gonna let that crisp up just a tiny bit, but uh, I, I know that these are gonna be stuck. Let's see, yeah, these are stuck on there like glue. So like I mentioned before, guys, I prefer the, uh, I prefer the butter method. So if you guys are having issues with eggs, I think the uh, butter method is probably your best bet. We still got some heat on this, so we're gonna cut it. We're gonna cut the heat. And uh, I'm gonna do my best to salvage this. Actually, what I'm gonna do is put the cover on it and uh, wish for the best. So wish me luck, guys, and hopefully they don't turn out terrible. William Hurt says, oil and eggs, uh, butter is better. I agree. I prefer butter. Corey Clark says, bacon grease is best for eggs. I believe it. I believe it. I've actually done it before, and it is actually really good. Val's Black Cat's Rule says, pan is too hot. Uh, possibly. You are probably right, Val's Black Cat's Rules. With these eggs, uh, what I'm planning on doing is making an egg croissant sandwich because I have uh, croissants, so I'm probably going to do that. Um, they're not going to go to waste, just so you guys know. 
Trying to get that light back on. All right, I could make myself a little egg sandwich. Val's black, black casserole. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Jackie Mills, nice pan. Thank you very much. Corey Clark says, put a fried egg on your next cheeseburger you make. It's awesome. I haven't tried that, actually, but I probably will. Debbie says, fried egg sandwiches are the bomb. Yes, they are. Yep, sorry guys, to disappoint you guys, as I mentioned, I'm not a pro when it comes to oil. My preferred method is butter. But there we are. I think they look decent, not as bad as I thought they were gonna be. So, can we salvage these? Yeah, I think so. Alrighty. There we go. At least not a complete loss, but yes. As I mentioned, I always have a harder time when it comes to um, to uh, oil and eggs. So there we are. You can see the uh, the crisp edges and the soft egg whites. Um, and I do like using the lid. The lid always gives it, um, you know, a very thorough and very soft cook. So if you guys don't use lids for when you cook your eggs, believe me, it does wonder. So with that, let's see, let's try and flip. I'm not going to toss it. I don't feel like this one's going to toss very well anyway. And there we are. I think the underside looks pretty decent. I thought it was going to be burnt, to be honest. But um, that doesn't look bad. So uh, I think we did okay. I mean, it's not... What I should have done, just like Val's Black Cat's rule said, I should have let the pan cool down for a bit before adding the oil, before, you know, adding the egg as well. Uh, because I think, from what I understand, I think the pan has to be a l on the warmer side and not hot side. So, let's see, what do you guys think? Bookworm73 says, I use canola spray and I like how it works. Works well. William Hurt says, I'd eat that. Yeah, well, a lot of people don't like it this way. I, they say it's chewy and uh, it's a waste of an egg, but I, I prefer my eggs like this. This is how I eat my eggs. I don't like them where they're almost like boiled. Um, not that there's anything wrong with like, um, what is it when you put it in the water? What's that called? It's not... Um, what is the term? My goodness. Poached. I like poached eggs, but, you know, some people want, like, very delicate eggs. They want that egg white to be uh, nearly pristine. They don't want any kind of charring. You get a lot of people that, you know, with their preferences, and that's fine. I'm not saying that that's, you know, there's anything wrong with that, but, you know, to me, fried eggs are fried eggs. So there we are. Now, just for, you know, we're going to do another one. So let me go grab another egg. And we're going to try it one more time with oil. And uh, wish me luck, and hopefully it'll work. So we're going to let the pan cool down a bit. I'm going to go inside and grab an egg real quick. Bear with me. All right, guys, so quick question. I, I have a question. For those of you that cook your eggs with uh, oil, how much oil do you guys add to the pan before you place in your egg? 
Oops, sorry about that. Hit the uh, hit the stand there. All righty, we're gonna wipe this down once more. And hope for the best. But yeah, what do you guys, um, how much oil do you guys use? Is it enough to cover the bottom of the skillet or just, uh, you know, like a half of a teaspoon, uh, for example? Astra Ann says, who made this pan? This is a chef skillet pan from Wagnerware. Uh, it's unmarked, but uh, I, li I love the handle design, very unique, and just the way the shape of the pan is. Uh, it's made for flipping, for sauteing, so very nice pan, but uh, unmarked chef skillet from Wagnerware. This is a nine inch made in USA, and this one most likely was probably made in the 80s. Um, this right here, this on the handle, See if I can show you guys. It's uh, flat. So this one is around the 80s to 90s design. Uh, the older ones from the 70s, 60s and 70s had more for like a thumb rest uh, versus this where it's flat. But um, yeah, it's a uh, Wagner. And this, this skillet actually reminds me of the uh, 1891 skillets from Wagner, which not very many people like, but this one here has a very nice cooking surface, so I decided to clean it up, and once I did, I, I loved it, so I kept it. Mark Harris, you're making me hungry, inspiring me to fry some eggs, Luis. Uh, so I'm going to pause your live stream and go try my luck on my lodge. Wish me luck. Yes, good luck, uh, Mark Harris. Uh, it is very... It's almost like a challenge to get the perfect fried egg. It is a challenge to do it correctly, to do it the way you want it. And getting that result, like, it's almost like if there's anything that can be done in cast iron, the perfect eggs are what people want out of their cast iron. As I mentioned, Lodge, their, you know, their logo is based on an egg with the... Uh, within the O, so the O in the lodge is the egg skillet, or I'm sorry, the egg in a skillet. This one's still hot, but I'm trying to show you guys what I mean. So, for example, as you can see the O here on the lodge, that's a skillet, and in the center is actually an egg. So that's what that is. And so yeah, I mean, getting the perfect egg is a challenge. But there are those that do it effortlessly. I wish that I was one of those. I am not. Uh, as, as versed as I am, you know, cooking in cast iron, that is one of the challenges that I have not mastered. I think the pan has cooled enough. So uh, we're going to get going. Let's see. All righty, guys. Let's give this one more chance. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it's not that hot anymore. Uh, Val's Black Cat's Rules. I have a question for you. Do you uh, place the oil in to heat it up with the pan or do you do a, you know, cold oil? But from what I, I, from what I understand is you place the oil in perhaps at the same time. So let's try that. Let's, instead of... Uh, we're going to do that much this time. Wish me luck, guys. Here we go. So you're saying lower heat from what I get, guys. So we're going to do it this manner. We're going to let that heat up, and uh, we'll see what happens. Debbie says, nope, no coddled eggs, no slime for me. Yeah, I don't like that either. Uh, oh, you guys are saying warm it in the pan. Okay, thank you. That's, that's what I'm doing. Let's see. Uh, William, Hurt, I, uh, William Hurt says, I think it's more about timing more than anything. Yes, I think so as well. 
But how do you know? Is it the heat? I mean, that, that handle, I can't grab it just like that. I do have to use something to protect my hands. We do have a bit more oil on this pan. As you can see, it's enough to coat the surface. All right. I think, I mean, that is getting pretty hot now, so we might be past that time again. So wish, wish me luck, guys. No, I think I'm having the same results, guys. As I mentioned, it is, it is difficult. I feel like uh, there's, I don't know how you guys do it. Those of you that use uh, oil for your eggs, I don't know how you guys do it. And I do want to say that these are probably stuck on a lot worse. Yep. It is a challenge, guys. I'm telling you, I mean, oil and butter, uh, I get really great results. Butter, perfect results. Oil, I can't do it. Don't know what it is. Don't know why. But uh, now this has become something that I want to master. I need to be able to do this with just oil. All right, we're gonna cut the heat on that. We don't want too, uh, too much heat to uh, the point that it's just gonna burn the, uh, burn the eggs. So what we're gonna do is cover it once again. And uh, here are the prior ones. So this one here is with butter, this one's with oil, and uh, I think both look pretty yummy. So I'm very happy with the results on the egg though. The, the I'm sorry, the oil one. Um, the butter is always, you know, this is something I'm used to. My eggs are starting to get cold. That sounded kind of weird. Don't mean it that way, guys. Don't mean it that way. Uh, drop a little bit of water. I sh yeah, I actually, I should have. Too late now, I think. Honey Badger says, add a little bit. Well, okay, let's try it. Let's see what happens. It's actually pretty hot and humid over here in the uh, Sierra Nevadas. That's where I'm at, guys. And um, man, it's been thunderstorming the last couple days, and we've been we're getting some crazy downpours, uh, awesome lightning uh, or thunderstorms. But man, I am not used to the humidity. It it is it's only 50% humidity here. To me, it feels like I'm drowning in sweat. So I don't, I don't know. For those of you that live in almost 100% humidity, I don't know how you guys do it. You guys are insane. All right. I think I did cut the heat. Yes, I did. Okay. A bit charred and a bit stuck, but I'll tell you what, I think that water actually did the trick in helping it uh, steam and release the uh, egg from the pan. So not bad. Let's see, can we get it unstuck? Uh, I mean, not bad. There's still the, uh, the egg yolk still hasn't set. Very runny eggs, but not bad. Oh, by the way, guys, if you guys are looking for a fish spatula, I know this isn't meant for eggs, but this is great because uh, I, I love the angle and the flexibility. Very, very flexible. These are awesome. Uh, William and Sonoma have these. Um, 
They're made here in the USA. They're a bit pricey. You can probably get yourself something at uh, on Amazon for a lot cheaper, but these are high carbon uh, stainless steel made here in the US. And uh, I love these a lot. They remind me a lot of, uh, what's that brand? That vintage brand I like a lot. I forget the name of it. A lot of, um, a lot of folks have the uh, vintage, like it's almost like this where it's very nice plastic and high quality stainless steel. If you guys remember the name of that brand, let me know in the comments. Well, that water did help because believe me, those eggs were not going to come out uh, without a fight. So I'm, uh, you know, thank you guys for that tip. The water does help out a lot, so. Alrighty, well, let's check the uh, underside and see what it looks like, actually. Not bad as well, but you can see we did get a... A little bit of char on the underside, which, as I mentioned, not a lot, not a lot of people like that. They they see that and they say that your eggs are going to be chewy. So, and I I I know what they mean by that. <laughs> There's some eggs where you're like biting it and you're like, why is this this way? They're not supposed to be like that. But anyway, all right, guys, this is gonna this is motivating me to continue making more. But I'm not gonna make more because three eggs is a lot of eggs. And I don't want to waste eggs either. Um, so especially these because these are uh, eggs that my brother gave me from his uh, chicken farm. So uh, I, I am going to keep these. Um, we're going to make a egg sandwich, ham and egg sandwich. Or a cris uh, what is it? Cris sandwich because I have cr uh, croissants. But anyway, let's keep going. I want to show you guys. We're, we're, that's pretty much it with the uh, tutorial on eggs. My uh, my apologies, as I mentioned, I am not very well versed when it comes to oil and eggs. So uh, as I said, my apologies. I no, I'm not a professional. I'm not the best, you know, uh, uh, cook. Nor am I the best, uh, you know, person to to say, hey, yeah, I, I know exactly. I get them perfect 100 percent of the time. No, I, I still have a lot to learn. So with that, I appreciate the tips. I appreciate you guys uh, letting me know, you know, these little things that you guys do. But let's move on to some other things. Although I think you can see real quick, and let me show you guys. I think you can see the uh, progress that we made from the uh, first to the last. So first one here is the butter. This one here, well, I'm about to drop my plate. So butter, oil the first time, oil the last time. These are a lot whiter and a lot less cooked or, you know, they don't look dry. Uh, these look in the middle. These look a bit more dry. Um, this I added way too much butter. That's why you get a lot of that brown. That browning of the butter turns the egg this color and then you get these little specks. And that's just from the, from the uh, butter, uh, as I mentioned, browning. But uh, still very good eggs and uh, we're definitely going to use these or, you know, eat these for actually I'm going to eat these so anyway let's move on to uh, something else that I want to show you guys that I've um, you know recently acquired so let's move this out of the way and move this out of the way as well actually bear with me guys I'm going to take these inside guys we're gonna adjust this and hopefully you guys can see me uh is there a way oh i can actually so as i mentioned i broke my camera so what i'm gonna do is uh, flip myself around 
And there we are. Oh my goodness. There we are. Okay. That way you guys can see me. Let me adjust this. Alrighty. Okay, guys. So this is the uh, newest acquisition that I've made with uh, Cancer and Cookware, and that is a little BSR pan. So very happy. This is the uh, six. Let's see if you guys, the light can catch it. Uh, six CBS. So cornbread skillet, six, and this is the six wedge. So a lot smaller, you know, this is my hand right here. And uh, just about that size. I don't have massive hands, but nor, nor do I have small hands. So normal average size hands. <laughs> and uh, it's a pretty small guy. Not as big as I thought it was going to be. So I think it's pretty awesome. Uh, I can't wait. I need to season this. Right now it's just uh, oiled. So what I did was um, I got this pan. I placed it in the lye tank. Uh, placed it in a uh, vinegar solution, scrubbed it, you know, with some steel wool, and then right now I used a little bit of baking soda to clean it up to uh, neutralize the uh, the vinegar solution. That way we can uh, add a coat of seasoning to this. So yes, guys, uh, you know, there's a process to uh, restoring cast iron cookware, but anyway, BSNR, you know, a little cornbread skillet, which pretty awesome. I had never seen one before, and I'm I'm happy that I managed to find one, so uh, pretty cool. Um, like I mentioned, it was pretty rusty, which I didn't think it was, it didn't look that bad, but uh, it was rusty on the edges, so I had to do some work to it. But I got this one, and I also, I also have, where is it? I, I have another one. Let me show you guys what I mean. So my original plan, guys, my original plan for the um, for the video today was actually to uh, to do some cornbread, but um, you know my wife's like, hey, can you make me some some protein for my salad? I said sure. So I kind of scrapped that, and then I figured since I got that comment, you know, we're gonna do the uh, egg fried egg uh, tutorial. So anyway, this is the uh, other pan that I have and I've had this one for a while and you guys have seen it on the channel uh, it's also a um, BSNR this one is a the eight uh, portion or the eight wedge uh, cornbread skillet pan also as I mentioned BSNR you can tell by the ridge on the handle don't know if you can see it very well but oh my goodness this lighting sorry guys I got to do something about the lighting but hopefully you guys can catch it there anyway so I got this one now, and I have the, um, you know, little brother and the big brother, which I think are pretty cool. So pretty cool pans. As I mentioned, we're going to do uh, some cornbread pretty soon. We'll do a video. My sister has a really good recipe for cornbread. Um, it's always a family favorite. And she adds some um, some apple. So we she makes a southern, like a southern style, like a sweet cornbread. But she adds... Um, it's almost like an apple pie style of, because uh, she adds all the uh, toppings, all the, uh, you know, all the ingredients that you typically do into an apple pie, but she does it with the apples and she'll cook them down and then she'll, you know, put them into the cornbread uh, with some honey and man, I mean, everybody was just blown away when my sister, you know, um, made that cornbread. So if you guys haven't tried all these other things that you can do with cornbread, I mean, savory, is awesome but sweet is like a delicacy it's it's so you know it's it's an awesome dessert that very many people don't know about so if you guys haven't tried as i mentioned you know apples like an apple pie style cornbread give that a go if anything i would have to get the recipe from my sister if i if i do this which i'm thinking next week we'll do a cornbread with the, my sister's recipe and i'll share it with you guys so you guys can give it a go as well but very happy, as I mentioned, that I managed to get the uh, the smaller version of this one. So this is the eight, and we have the six. So pretty cool, but I like these a lot. So I'm very happy. And right now, this one needs a coat of seasoning. Uh, right now, it's only oiled. We got to give it a coat of seasoning. So I'm getting this ready to uh, place it in the oven. But anyway, that's that. And um, the other one that I got was this um, Lodge number nine. I do have a Lodge 
number eight. As you can see, that's a nine. So this is the ARC logo with a single notch. Um, the four spouts are actually uh, fairly, you know, bigger than what you are, you know, used to, I guess, in traditional lodge pour spouts. You know, the, the modern ones are tiny. But, um, yeah, uh, the cooking surface on this, not bad. I mean, it's not the best. It's got some uh, pitting here and there, but, you know, and some utensil marks. But this will clean up really well, and I'm excited for this one. Uh, I'll be honest, guys, if there is a size that is my favorite, my favorite size of, of any kind of cast iron will always be a number nine. Why? Because I feel like the 10 is a great size, but it, sometimes it's too small. And the 12 is just too big. The 11 or the number nine, so number nine vintage, you know, measuring system, number nine would be 11 inches. That is the sweet spot in my opinion. And for everyday cooking and for everyday tasks, uh, the nine or the 11 inch, those are the best pans to use for every home, for any home. So uh, for me, the number nines are very, uh, very useful and those are my favorite size pans. So I have a, uh, I have a lot of number nines. I have one from Griswold to like, actually no, probably three from Griswold, uh, several from uh, Wagner, I have a lot from Wagner. And uh, Lodge, I have a couple of nines, vintage. Sorry, I'm trying to get the light back on. So um, that's my favorite size. 12 sometimes are too big, 10s are sometimes too small. But uh, for me, the Goldilocks will always be the 11. But, so yeah, that's uh, one of them. This, this the, the thing that I like about this Lodge too is that it's um, obviously it has the raised nine and it also has the uh, ARC logo on the back. Um, so pretty awesome pans. Uh, my brother got these as always, you know, he's always finding all these cool things for me, but he, he does, um, a lot of uh, vintage, you know, like hunting because he has an eBay account and he sells, um, like proto, he sells a lot of vintage, uh, tools. So he'll craftsmen, uh, he sells all these things and, uh, whether they're, you know, like uh, wrenches, uh, socket wrenches, uh, vintage snap-on, things of that nature. He collects all that stuff. So when he goes to the uh, yard sales, estate sales, uh, swap meets, he always goes and also looks for the cast iron for me. So I appreciate all that uh, from him. But my collection has gotten so big and uh, now I'm, I'm starting to uh, realize that maybe I've gone just a tiny bit over, overboard. But anyway... I haven't fully, you know, convinced myself that I don't need more. Uh, this is another one here. Uh, this one is a spinner. I think every single Wagner, you can almost see it here. Uh, it does have a bubble that protrudes out, outward. But, uh, you know, I like this because it has the stylized logo. The inside also very nice, not that bad. Um, and all these were placed in the lye bath, vinegar bath. Uh, baking soda scrubbed with stainless steel and that's the way I like doing it so uh, if you guys are gonna restore cookware that's that's the best route I mean besides electrolysis if you guys don't have the electrolysis set up the next best thing in my opinion is the light a light tank and then a vinegar bath uh, uh, along with um, stainless steel not stainless steel avoid uh, in my opinion avoid stainless steel and use steel wool uh, it's less abrasive and it won't leave any of those marks on your uh, cooking surface or skillet or whatever it is that you're restoring. But um, anyway, this one's another one. And I'm actually thinking, guys, of doing a giveaway. So once I restore these and once I get these seasoned, because uh, this is not seasoned yet, once I get these seasoned, then I will most likely do a giveaway for you guys. As I mentioned, this one, though, would probably be a better candidate for somebody that has a gas cooktop or you know, for outdoors, uh, things of that nature, but I wouldn't recommend it for inside the house for an electric uh, or induction because it will spin, um, as I mentioned, pretty bad. The other one that we got was uh, another chicken fryer. This one's a Lodge, three notch with the uh, blob. Also, it hasn't been seasoned yet. It's only got a coat of oil on it. Uh, this one here though, are, this one here is, flat as can be this thing is awesome 
The best thing about this one as well, which it's hard to come by, is that it has a very beautiful mill milled surface. So this one is milled. And man, uh, you know, Lodge is very well known for how heavy they are. But this one here, very lightweight. And uh, considering, you know, it's made out of cast iron, considering that, uh, it's lightweight. I, I, you know, I can hold it without having to struggle too much. Um, and this one is a lot lighter than the modern stuff from Lodge. The modern, you know, pieces from Lodge, they're a lot thicker. You can see the sidewalls here. Uh, they are thinner. And the milling surface is just beautiful. So I do like this a lot. And uh, I'll most likely do a giveaway for this chicken fryer along with that Wagner chicken fryer. I mean, the, the best thing about the Wagner one is just the stylized logo. It's in great shape. And I do like that one a lot. But as I mentioned, I, I do know that I have already a lot of things. But enough of that. Let me read the chat. So let's see. That way I, it can be a two-way experience here, guys. Val's Black Cat Rule says, I have a uh, number seven Griswold Friar, uh, Steep Sides. Yeah, oh, Steep Sides. That lodge actually has very, um, they're not steep. They're very, you know, like almost like a chef style uh, sidewalls. Rick says, yeah, the vintage pieces are usually much lighter. Yeah, they are. Uh, Corey Clark says, I go to Nap Napa Auto Parts store and buy the red scrub pads in a box, not the common green ones. I have to check those out. Yeah, I've, I've used the green ones. Those are garbage. They, they get destroyed within one use, so I don't recommend them. Uh, Bookworm73, honey, if you get a pan from Costco, all of them that I looked at all had a five to six jagged inch, five to six jagged inch under the edge. They aren't perfect pans, but of course it doesn't affect the cooking surface. Bookworm73, are you referring to the uh, Costco Lodge number nines that came out? I, I, I don't know exactly why they made it exclusive to Costco. It could be the fact that maybe they were, uh, they didn't turn out that great. So maybe, not that they were defective, but you know, second best. That could be a thing. I don't know. Val's Black Cat Rule says bake and spinners. Yeah. Spinners are great for baking. Yes, I agree with that. Honey Badger says, I'm thinking about posting up outside of Costco to get the new Lodge Number 9. They're, uh, they're not close enough to pay for a membership. Honey Badger, you've been a longtime follower. I think I have one. Uh, or I can get you one. So I'll get you one, Honey Badger. You guys, you guys have been here since day one. And I appreciate you know, everything that you guys uh, do for me as well. So um, Honey Badger, send me an email. And I'll send one your way. I have, like I mentioned, guys, I have way too many. Way too many pieces. I, I do need to get rid of some of them. And when I went, I bought spares. Just in case. As if, like, you know, I'm going to get robbed. And then I'll have a backup for that. So in my, in my train of thought, I was like, oh, I have a backup for the backup. <laughs> That's my train of thinking. You know, the, the way I think. Uh, Rick says, sure, blame Vicky. Rock Hunter says, I got a six wedge off of Etsy. Uh, Etsy, actually, I'll, I'll be honest, guys. If you guys are looking for cast iron cookware, and sometimes you don't, you know, you're looking for a specific one. You know, I know that cast iron chaos is always, you know, not necessarily against it, but he's, We'll say it this way, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful or anything, but he is frugal. He's very, um, like, if, if it's not, you know, at, a, uh, at the price that he thinks is fair, then he won't even think about it, which is fine. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. As I mentioned, you know, he's very frugal. Not in a bad way. Like I said, he's smart about his money, which he's, you know, a lot better than I am. Because me, I mean, you guys have seen all the unboxing videos. Am I smart about my money? Of course not. Because I, you know... I'll say 10% of the stuff that I own is, uh, has been given to me, actually about 50%, but not by companies. 50% have been you know, shared or, like, for example, like the vintage collection that I own, which is you know, a good maybe 200 pieces, it's a lot. The vintage pieces that I own, every single one, 
was given to me by my brother. Uh, he went in, you know, the yard sales and got it for five, ten dollars at yard sales. And that's what Cast Iron Chaos likes to do. And that's that's a really great way to go. But if you've been looking and looking and looking and there's a specific, you know, a piece of cookware that you want, I don't think there's anything wrong with you going to either Etsy or eBay and buying it for yourself. I mean, if you have the money, you want to splurge on yourself, uh, you know, once in a while, then great, do it. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But, you know, we always, uh, you have to be cautious about how much you buy. Don't be like me. I got a bug in here. Don't be like me, you know, don't go and try and buy everything all at once. Um, so. Uh, like I mentioned, luck luckily enough, uh, there's just ways that I get through and manage with, with, with my collection. So I do my best to make sure that every single pan will be used, is used, uh, and has a place in my kitchen. Just like Cast Iron Chaos, you know, they have to have uh, a use. Uh, and there is a small collection that I have that's just purely for collection. I've showed you guys, you know, I have some that have tags on them. Uh, and those are just purely collection. I'm not gonna touch those. I'm not gonna season them. Um, they're just hung there and they're there for display. They're my collection, but I don't have very many of those. If anything, there's about 20 pieces of cast iron cookware that's, you know, collection. But anyway, uh, that's that one. What other one do I have? There's another one that I just received, but I don't know. Anyway, um, so yeah. Honey Badger. Uh, Honey Badger, just, uh, yeah, I'll send you an, uh, my address. Just um, make sure that you uh, email me. I think you still have my email, Honey Badger. Email me so that way I can uh, ship that out to you. Like I mentioned, not a big deal. I have tons, so uh, not, a big, not a big deal there. All right, guys, um, blasting. I do have uh, a question. Has anybody talked to or heard from uh, growing garden, gar what is it, gardening and growing? I sent that person a message, but I haven't heard back. At least I haven't checked uh, today. I haven't checked, but yesterday and the, the whole time I've been, you know, looking at my emails, I even reached out on YouTube comments and um, this person hasn't responded. So I don't know exactly what's going on. I'm trying to ship out the uh, last giveaway, but uh, this person hasn't responded, hasn't sent me any messages, hasn't responded to my messages on, on YouTube. So hopefully I can get in touch with them. But um, that is why the uh, the giveaway for this, you know, this one here for this show tonight is going to be postponed until I get that squared away. And uh, for the next one, we're going to do a giveaway. And let me show you guys the giveaway for the next uh, Thursday live. So bear with me. Okay, guys, for the next giveaway, we have the uh, Sholo Griddle pan. Oh my goodness. I was trying not to ruin the uh, this here, but I placed the uh, my pan, the hot pan that I had on this, and but luckily I had something to cover it, protect it. But anyway, we're gonna do this as a giveaway. This is what the pan looks like. I think it's a very beautiful griddle. Um, so we're gonna do this, but it's not just that one. It's gonna be the set. So uh, last year I also had this uh, in my collection. I already have an, I already have one, so uh, I don't need this one. And here is the other part of the collection, which is the skillet, 10 and a quarter inch skillet. Also the uh, sugar skull. Uh, that's what they are naming it, sugar skull skillet. And uh, it goes in, you know, with this one here. That So these two are both a collection. So for the next uh, live, we're gonna do that giveaway for these two. And uh, these two are gonna be going to one person. So it's not gonna be two giveaways. It's gonna be one giveaway for one very lucky person that will get the griddle and the pan or the skillet. So make sure you guys tune in next week. Uh, that way you guys can be entered into the giveaway. As, as always, you know, I do these giveaways as a thank you because, well, you guys are here spending time with me, watching me do things and, you know, messing up eggs here and there. And uh, so I appreciate your time. Uh, I'm not trying to waste anybody's time. So I'm doing my best to 
to teach, to show, and uh, to entertain. So uh, with that being said, as I mentioned, you know, I'm doing my best. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, live today. I know it was very kind of like uh, here and there. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this. So uh, we're at 75 minutes, which is about an hour and 15. Yeah, about an hour and 15 minutes. So with that, I will see you guys next week. Make sure you guys uh, tune in next week for that giveaway. And also, um, I might be posting some updates over the weekend. So look out, you know, in the community tabs and also uh, like lives. Uh, I'm actually meeting one of my friends tomorrow. Um, his name is Cast Iron Mike 33 from Instagram. If you guys haven't seen him or if you guys are in our, I'm sorry, if you guys are on Instagram, uh, give him a follow. He, he buys, sells, and restores Cast Iron Cookware. Uh, but he's a great guy. And um, that Finex with the uh, milling, like that, you know, like weird little mill marks on it, that Finex 12 inch. I actually got it from him and he's a great guy. I have photos, so uh, I'll be having a meetup with him tomorrow. We're also gonna go and find more cast iron cookware here locally where I'm at. So we're gonna spend a couple hours together and uh, hang out. So I'll be vlogging it, I guess, or, you know, recording it. And then I'll either, you know, do a live tomorrow for you guys. So possibly look out for a live tomorrow. If not, I'll upload a video, so. Uh, you know, like I mentioned, keep a lookout on the community tabs uh, for any of that information. So as always, guys, I appreciate your time. Thank you guys for watching and uh, have a great weekend. Like I said, look out for some uh, updates tomorrow. So uh, anyway, with that, we'll see you guys next week. All right. So have a safe weekend. Be safe. And I will see you guys next weekend or next Thursday. All right, guys. Bye bye.